Greetings and welcome back to Delisa's Life Dance. It is a fantastic Friday and I just want to say welcome to my channel where I talk about health, wellness, and positivity. And today I want to uh, let you know that the month of September, we've got a few more days, but the month of September is Sickle Cell Disease Awareness Month. So I am going to make you aware in this in this little video some things to be aware of with sickle cell disease. If you've never heard of this disorder, I'm going to explain it right now and hopefully it will help to guide you in understanding this disease, this disorder, and understanding what people that have this go through, especially healthcare professionals where a lot of what we do, I'll talk about it in a little bit, but uh, a lot of what we do is screening and assessment, especially as nurses in the ED and um, just everywhere in general in the hospital and the healthcare world. So let's dive right in. So sickle cell anemia, um, sickle cell, dis what is it? A sickle cell, sickle cell is a red blood cell disorder. It is inherited and it means that it is passed down from people that get people that get colored eyes, skin, hair from their parents. So you would uh, get this, you would have to have, of course, two parents, and both parents would have this marker on their DNA for sickle cell. So each parent would have what would be called sickle cell trait. And when those two traits come together, it makes sickle cell disease. The cells, actually the red blood cells, create a sickle and it's hard for those cells when um, patients are in crisis. Actually, my very first patient when I was a nurse, I was in clinical rotation at the Howard University in Washington, D.C., Freeman's Hospital, where they, are, they have spearheaded and have a whole association that helps with this disorder at the Howard University Hospital. Anyway, I was taking care of my very first patient. I had to give my very first uh, I am injection, and it was to a young man that was in sickle cell disease crisis. And I will never forget that. And it impacted my life. And down the road, I met a woman that has been a hero and a leader and pioneer in sickle cell disease and sickle, sickle cell disease awareness. Um, her name is Dr. Marsha Treadwell. But there are so many, um, Congressman Barbara Lee and Congressman Davis. I was just, Marsha invited me to a forum where they are speaking about national help for and support and funding for sickle cell anemia. So that's just a little side note. I just went right in and talked about it. But let's get back to the sickling of the cell, of the red blood cells. Red blood cells are usually very smooth and round and bendable and pliable, and they're able to go through the blood, cell, blood the, it, through the veins and arteries. When sickled cell disease, when a cell is sickled or a crescent, much like a crescent moon, and I will talk about that too, but they look like a crescent moon. It's a crescent. And so... Um, the cells become stiff, they become sticky, and they cause a block and flow and breakdown of the um, inside of the red blood cell. And so when that happens, these crescent moon-shaped cells catch one another and they stick together on the cell walls and they block them. It's difficult to three squeeze through. So there is a, so much pain involved with this process. And so, um, and it causes pain because of that uh, process. And who has sickle cell and why? I'm just reading off the internet right now because I'm just feeling inspired to do this, share with you. Because it is something that's a rare disease and it has not been to the forefront as diseases go. Cystic fibrosis is a very, very rare disease and they get funding from the United States. I believe it's... Uh, I'll, I'll check my notes, but they get way more funding than sickle cell disease, which has way more p patients that are um, affected in the United States. However, those patients are patients of color. So the attention may not be um, 
brought to the forefront. So that's why we all must be aware and all must be a help would be there. And I am a nurse and I am a nurse of color. And so I am concerned with those diseases that affect everyone, but that can potentially affect uh, people of color. They don't have to be black. They can be Mediterranean, Latin, Asian, so many wide varieties. And people don't realize that sickle cell anemia does affect so many other ethnicities other than Black, African, African American. So here we go. And I just said, <laughs> it's funny because I just said that and now I'm reading it. <laughs> Sickle cell affects people of Hispanic, South Asian, South European, and Middle Eastern ancestry. Sickle cell affects those whose ancestors came part from parts of the world where malaria was common. Sickle cell has, effect, has the effect of populations because having a sickle cell trait helps protect the person from the harmful malaria. So it's like a double-edged sword. It's like a, a blessing and a curse. So if you have the trait and you were living in those areas that had malaria, you were protected. But when two people get together and create a person that has the actual sickle selling, the sickling of it, those genetic markers, then it becomes a very serious and uh, life-threatening illness. And what else do I want to say about sickle cell disease? Um, some of the complications and damage that happens uh, with the sickling of the cell is um, it, it does, it, it's pain, stress, um, can increase pain when pa patients go into crisis. There's something called acute chest syndrome where they're gonna have chest pain, cough, fever, rapid breathing, shortness of breath, also stroke or learning silent stroke. Um, the brain injuries have no, there's no outward signs of a stroke. Brain imaging and testings of thinking that shown that children and adults with sickle cell often have signs of silent brain injury, a silent stroke. And so what else? Heart problems, kidney problems, um, gallstones, priapism, liver, pro liver problems, complications with pregnancy, um, you name it, miscarriages. It's just very detrimental. And so uh, what we need to do is we need to make sure we get proper diagnosis on this, um, this disease and testing is relatively easy. Early diagnosis of sickle cell is very important because many complications can be prevented with early diagnosis and treatment. In 2006, it became mandatory to test all newborns for sickle cell in the United States, but older children and adults can be tested too. If you were born before 2006, or if you don't know if you were tested, you can ask the doctor for a blood test. And what's actually so important for everyone across the board, if you're from those areas that I named, is to get tested for sickle cell trait. Because also what I learned was that if you have sickle cell trait, your A1C level may be elevated and you may become misdiagnosed with diabetes, which you do not have because you have sickle cell trait. However, your healthcare practitioner may not be aware of sickle cell disease trait and it may not be on the forefront of their caregiving when diagnosing an A1C. So with that said, um, it is pos also possible for doctors to diagnose sickle cell before birth. This is done by sampling some of the um, surrounding amniotic fluid and tissue taken from the placenta. This test can be done in the first few weeks of pregnancy if you know you may already have the genetic a marker of sickle cell trait. Um, a woman can ask for a referral for genetic counseling for the baby. Additional test, if a baby or a baby is born with sickle cell, they may not show any symptoms for about six months after birth. At the first visit, the doctor will typically do a blood test to establish the normal hemoglobin level. Additional blood tests may occur in future visits to check hemoglobin levels and make sure that the red blood cell is not too low anemia. The doctors might suggest additional testing um, to check for possible complications of the decision. So um, I hope you became aware of what sickle cell disease is, how it affects um, the patient, how it affects us, and how it affects everyone in the society, especially if you're a healthcare provider. And um, that should also be on the forefront of your brain. 
So I thank you. Like, subscribe, and share. Please smash that like button to let me know that you liked it. Smash that bell notification that so that you know that I'm on. And I love you out there. Thank you for listening. If there's anything that helped you understand sickle cell anemia, sickle cell trait, please let me know. I will follow up with some other information in the links below. Uh, other than that, I hope you all join me on Sunday with uh, Debbie Jade, Purifying Your Spirit. And that's it for me today on this fantastic Friday. Again, it's Delisa and I love you and take care of yourselves. Be well, stay safe. Ciao, ciao.